Hi, welcome back to the Backpacker Coach. And today I have another special episode of Chris Kramer's and Lisanne Froon, The Girls Missing from Panama. So in this video, we're going to go in depth into the timeline and actually go look at the time in between each photo. And I'm going to kind of reenact essentially each um, time in between each photo and see whether it's actually possible for them to make it back and forth to the camera or take backpacks on, backpacks off kind of thing. And so we're going to um, do the best, essentially the best possible scenario. So what I've done is I have tried to, I've made everything at wide angle, which um, at 25 millimeters, um, assuming that they didn't zoom in <coughs> to any of the pictures. So this gives us the best possible scenario. Um, they may have zoomed in, and if they did zoom in, then they could be further out than actually what actually is indicated on the photograph. So then, you know, to even add more time onto the, all the photos that we're going to do, which would even make it more impossible. But so I'm kind of just giving them the best possible scenario um, with not having anything zooming back and forth and uh, just having it at total full wide angle. And that's what it looks like anyway, for the most part. Let's get into this and see whether or not the uh, timing in between the photos are possible. Okay, the first image I wanted to go over was the image that didn't have a number. And that's this picture here with, with Chris on the bridge. Um, the best, my best guess of where it actually would go would be right before image um, 479. Um, I'm assuming that this picture, while they're standing on the bridge, as well as like this one where they're standing on the bridge and they're just looking to the left or to the right, that would be my best guess. Now, the next, these next two pictures, these pictures to me look dead. What I mean by that is there's almost no reason for somebody to be taking these pictures. There doesn't look like there's really anything there. Um, looks like to me, why would you even take these pictures? There's no good reason for these. As well as, I don't know whether or not this is taken at the same, these two pictures are taken at the same place, but they spent six minutes and 21 seconds between this photo and this photo. So I don't know if that's turning around looking the other direction or not, I'm not sure. But nonetheless, it took six minutes and 21 seconds from the, this picture to this picture. But like I said, this picture especially of 480, it looks completely dead. It doesn't look like anyone should take that picture. There's no reason at all to take that picture. So the next thing I want to bring up is the time between this photo of 482. Um, it was taken at 1125 and 27 seconds. Now, from what I've been able to gather, it takes roughly about 15 minutes to get to this area where where the girls seem to be standing. Now, if you go back to the beginning of where the first picture was taken and the time it was taken at 11, 18 and 24 seconds. So that is roughly only seven minutes to this area. So that seems to be uh, a little fast. It's hard to know for sure whether that's correct or not. That's one of the definitely one of those things that needs to be done. I know that there's plenty of people out there that um, live in this area that are watching the videos. And that could be easily one of the things that somebody could do is walk from the beginning of the trail, from the sign to this location to see whether it takes only seven minutes. That would be um, very helpful to see whether that's even possible. There's also something else that I wanted to mention about um, these next three pictures. It doesn't exactly have to do with timing as much, but I still thought I would mention it just because I noticed it. If you look at the hair of, of Lisanne 
It looks more like it's in sort of, sort of like a messy bun here in this picture. And then if you look in this picture, it's pretty, pretty sure it's in a ponytail because it's flopping in the wind right here. Okay. And then in this one, I'm almost certain that that is a bun. Okay, so if that's a bun, and two seconds later, it's just a ponytail. That seems a little odd to me, as well as it's going to be bun, ponytail, bun, ponytail. That seems really weird. In just two seconds and four seconds, I don't think she'd be putting her hair up and down, up and down, up and down in just a couple seconds. That just doesn't seem right to me. The next issue we're going to look at is the four seconds between image 482 and 483. And we're going to go back to uh, 24 feet. There we go. It's about six seconds and <clears throat> we'll see how that compares. Also, you can kind of look at my shadow um, while we're just looking at it. It's uh, 330. Okay, now we're going to look at the time difference between 483 and 484 and see whether or not this is possible to get from this picture to this picture. All right, I'm going to go from from 24 feet to 6 feet and let's see how that works. Okay, now, after just doing this test, I was realizing something. I believe that these two second pictures, at least they appear that she must have zoomed in. Here's why I think that. So, you see over here that she is by this little tiny river water thing right here and you also can see this little tree back here so she's still by the water you can still see it's still slightly damp and there's water right here and you can see this tree little tree right here and once again you can see the water of course and you can see the little tree right here. As well as if she would have moved the that distance that I had walked, she would be much further ahead of this little water area. So that would mean that they must either it zoomed in or appears to look zoomed in, if you want to call it um, that they photoshopped it. But either way, it looks like it's zoomed in because she's in the same spot. She doesn't move for these same three pictures. But wait, there's more. Also, being that Chris was holding the camera 
and she was off to the right of the trail, she would have also had to move back off into the middle of the trail to actually get this shot because now she's in the middle you can see the road here but if you would just zoom in imagine just zooming on in this picture we would have gotten you know this which that's not the case Chris would have definitely had to move definitely to the middle of the road to be able to take that picture and I doubt that she would be able to do that in just two seconds. Next we're going to look at the time difference between 485 and 486. Um, this one's a really interesting one because they both are wearing the backpack so it means that one of them had to come up to the lens, trade backpacks, and then move back all in 10 seconds. So let's check that out and see whether that's possible. So Houston, we have a problem. So now that we realize that this, these other two images have been zoomed, we know that Lisanne is actually 24 feet away. So what I um, was going to show you was from this um, image, and I was assuming that she was nine feet away. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add um, four seconds to my time because what it looked like when I started from this um, distance it looked like it took me uh, roughly about three seconds to get back to the camera so and we know that it took me seven seconds to get from uh, back to the camera when I was at 24 feet so we are going to have to add four seconds to my time just to know that that is what happens when you start figuring stuff out on the fly. So here we go. We're going to just remember we have to add four seconds to our time that I did the test on. Okay, in this part, we're going to uh, do the backpack test. So you saw in the, uh, the last photo, um, Lisanne has to um, go up to the camera. She has to take off the backpack. She has to, has to give the that backpack to Chris. Chris has to put that backpack on and then she has to go back um, out 12 feet. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so here we go. Okay, I'm going to start here at 9 feet, and then go to the camera, and then go out to 12 feet. So here we go. Alright, so i got to take the backpack off, hand it to Chris, just has to put the backpack back on, fix the strap, put it back on. like that. Here we go. Can that be done in 10 seconds? Let's find out. Okay, this isn't necessarily a problem as much as it is a question. So if we look at uh, four, 491 and look at 492, there's eight seconds in between those two pictures. So that's really the only question is, is if you're going from this log in eight seconds, can you get to this area? Um, I don't know. Once again, it would be very easy for somebody to go out there and time whether you can get from this, this log to this area in eight seconds. So that's something that would be nice to be able to have somebody go out and check. Like I said before, I know there are plenty of people that are in Panama that live in that area that could easily be able to go from this area to this area and check to see whether that's even possible to get, get from those two areas in eight seconds. So I found this video 
of some people hiking the Pianista Trail. And I found the specific part, I believe, with the log, and then a little bit after that, the little narrow canyon. Watch this video and see if they can actually make it in eight seconds. Okay, so there's the log. Nice little waterfall. Okay, so they're looks like they're going up a steep section of the trail. It looks like they're going that's at least 24 feet or more than that. And then they're still going up more. It looks like now they're just trying to get to the little canyon part. Where now if you see, yeah, that looks like somewhere in there would be the other picture somewhere in here. So this is correct and this is the uh, log that was in the other picture then I would have to say that the timing of the pictures are are wrong because there's no way that they could get to that that little part of the narrow part of that little canyon in only eight seconds just doesn't look like it's possible so if you remember I was able to walk you know about 24 feet in about seven seconds so obviously it looked like they were walking much further than just 24 feet and so it would definitely take longer definitely to go further than what they were doing there so that is my conclusion of this part anyway it doesn't look like they are they would be able to make that jump from the log to that narrow part of the little canyons all right two questions here First, is it possible to be able to be this far away and actually be able to have both these, both the girls in the picture? This seems like they're awfully far away from the camera. So I'm not sure whether this is actually possible or not. Compared to, let's look at back at this picture. That seems very feasible. They're pretty close to the camera and you can you can fit into a picture pretty easily like that I and mean, that's obviously very easy to do but this i'm not sure this i guess i need to we need to do some more research on whether this is even possible to be able to be this far away from the camera and still be able to get everybody in it like that i'm not sure whether that's possible it might be my the bigger issue with this picture is that they're looking down the focal point would be down here like like they're standing on top of a you know a, a waterfall or something and something is going on down here doesn't make sense of once you get to the top of a mountain and you look down at the grass this doesn't seem right to me okay and then i wanted to look at a couple images from the top i wanted to look at this image here which what is the actual number Let's see 494 495 so 496 so i want to look at 496 which is this one and i want to compare it between this one and this one way over here which is 499 so between these two pictures um i wanted to was just looking at the clouds it's exact it's a uh, pretty much one minute and two seconds later. And so if we go over here, I just want to compare these two um, pictures and just looking at the clouds to see, does this look even possible for clouds to do this in one minute? And it just, looks odd to me it just doesn't look right in one minute for the clouds to change change that much but at the same respect usually when clouds are moving they also move across and if you notice back here they're the same but they're not but they're not really moving they're I mean they're different different clouds but they're in the same spot and usually clouds will move in a minute 
they actually move quite a bit. They move a lot more than you think. But they still seem to be in the same spot. So just something just doesn't look right to me. The only spot that I see that looks kind of similar, if you notice right here, that little tiny, that little white puffy part, that's the only part that like seems to like kind of be in this. It's like in the same spot. But nonetheless, there's only a minute between these pictures and those pictures. It just doesn't quite seem right to me. Um, they should be, if the clouds are moving, which if we look at the later pictures, we have all the, all this cloud cover that's moving in. Obviously it should be moving from the left to the right. But then more than likely this should all be moving and it's not really moving. It's just changing shape. So I don't know. Okay. I just wanted to bring this up. This is kind of interesting. I just realized this. So if you look at, um, image 499 and see how it's all nice and sunny and being it's sunny, it, the sun is able to make shadows with, with the clouds, right? Okay. So that's usually what happens when it's sunny and you get a nice, nice little shade from the cloud. Now, if you go over here, this is strange. If you notice the image or this, most of the image, it's cloudy yet back here, the sun is out and the, the cloud or the sun is making a shadow with the cloud. So that's just that notice that I thought that's kind of interesting that it's just, you know, it's cloudy in the foreground and yet out here it's sunny with this shadow of the cloud. So I just thought that was kind of interesting to mention. Possible, yes, but interesting that when you go from this picture it's nice and sunny back there. And that's something else would be nice to figure out is exactly where is the sun? Obviously it's high because it's, you know, one o'clock, but where is the sun exactly somewhere? It'd be interesting to kind of figure out. Anyway, that's what I just wanted to go over was that part. Okay. In this last little part, I just wanted to want you to look at something real quick. So if the clouds are moving in and they're getting heavier, if you look at image, uh, 500 and 501, Although you can't see it here because obviously you're looking just over here. So that might be possible, but saying that if it's getting cloudier and the clouds are moving in, then wouldn't you think that 14 minutes later that they'd have gone over the other side of the mountain, it's still, it should be cloudy and it's not. It's sunny. And then once again, 14 minutes again, later and a little bit more, it's still sunny. And the last, the last pictures, I'll go up a little closer here for you. It's still sunny. Still see plenty of bright sunshine. So that brings up the next question. So if the, these images are correct and it's getting cloudier. Why, why does it stay sunny? 
or why does it stay sunny even after obviously the clouds are coming in so that doesn't quite make a lot of sense either so what did we learn from this little experiment boys and girls I think we learned that either Chris and Lisanne were trail runners or most, if not all, of the images are not correct in the respect of the time between each photo. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and don't forget to comment, and we'll catch you next time out there.